Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on differential equations. This is video number 22, or it's video 3 in the subsection on Laplace's equation. Specifically in this video, I'm going to discuss and prove the first uniqueness theorem. The previous videos to this are as follows. Number 20, I introduced Laplace's equation, and I showed that Laplace's equation does not permit local maxima or local minima. And in number 21, I had an aside, and I, sh I proved, or I didn't really prove, but I discussed Earnshaw's theorem. So what we're going to do here is a very uh, prove a very important theorem, it's the first uniqueness theorem. And it can be a bit long-winded to write it down, so I've written it on the right-hand side of your screen there. Just read it. A potential distribution obeying Laplace's equation is completely specified within a volume V if the potential is specifi specified over the boundary surfaces. Now first of all, we call a solution to Laplace's equation a potential. Now, that's, I suppose, that's for lots of reasons, just accept that for the moment. So the, we'll say a solution to Laplace's equation um, is completely specified within a volume V if the potential is specified over the boundary surfaces. So what that really means is that if we find a solution to Laplace's equation, by whatever means, it's a solution full stop. Okay? So if we find a solution that is, and we use it through mathematical means, physical means, or whatever it is, it is the only solution that can possibly exist. So what we're going to do is we're going to consider a, a volume. Here's my volume V. And we, what we want to do is work out what will the volume, what will the potential be inside the center here. And what we'll show is all that matters is the potential on the boundary. Okay, so yeah, the, what what this also will tell us, so the first uniqueness theorem will also tell us, is what the boundary condition or what boundary conditions are appropriate to uniquely specify a solution, and the proof of this is by contradiction, and it's a bit it, it's a bit subtle, so you might just uh, you might just want to bear with me. So first of all, let's assume that there are in fact two solutions. Let's say that well we know of course that the general the general equation is going to be grad squared v is equal to zero but let's say we have a solution a1 so that if you take the Laplacian of a1 that's equal to zero and let's say we also have a2 that's a solution so take the Laplacian of a2 that's a, that's equal to zero now notice we're talking about the boundary so if both of these satisfy Laplace's equation on the boundary then on the boundary we have to have a1 is equal to a2. That's the first thing. Now what we do is we look at the potential difference. So we define c to be equal to a1 minus a2. All right, so c is equal to a1 minus a2. But if that means we're going to say that C also obeys, obeys Laplace's equation. That means that if we take the Laplacian of C, it's going to be equal to the Laplacian of A1 minus the Laplacian of A2. And of course, that's going to be equal to zero for many reasons. Okay, now what do we know? We know that C is equal to zero on the boundary. Why is C equal to zero on the boundary? Because on the boundary, A1 is equal to A2. That's why, okay. So C is equal to zero on the boundary. Next, we know that C cannot have a local maximum or local minimum. And that's because that one, that's one of the properties of Laplace's equation. So in the volume, We'll say in the volume here, we cannot have any local maxima or any local minima. Now, the next thing, and it's, I suppose, a bit of a, a trick, so we can rewrite the Laplacian as the divergence of the gradient, let's say, of C. And we know that that is going to be equal to zero. And what we call this means we're taking the divergence of something and it's equal to zero, so it's a divergenceless, divergenceless or a solenoidal. solenoidal field. 
Now, the interesting point about a solenoidal field is that all the field lines must uh, start or stop outside because they cannot start or stop inside the, the volume. So that's the property of a solenoidal field. So what we're after finding is that the uh, all extrema must occur on the boundaries, okay? Because like I said, Laplace's equation allows no local maxima or minima. So the maximum and minimum of the function C are both zero. That means that C is zero everywhere. And if C is zero everywhere, A1 is equal to A2. And what that means is there is a unique solution. Why is this important? It's important because if through whatever possible means or whatever means you can possibly imagine, you are able to solve Laplace's equation and come up with a, a solution that fits the boundary conditions and whatever, then you know for a fact that you have the only solution because that's what the first uniqueness theorem says. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel. You might also give me a comment in the comment box below.